Hello everyone, I am Anushka Mukherjee, a volunteer of Applied Forensic Research Sciences. Today I am going to give you a brief knowledge about poroscopy and echoscopy. So let's get started. Contents. Let's see what topics we will cover in today's video. We will learn what is the outcome. We will get an introduction of fingerprints. Learn poroscopy, case study on poroscopy, echoscopy, case study on echoscopy. We will then understand its significance in forensic fields with a concluding note. Last but not the least, there is a MCQ question waiting for you in the end. So let's begin. Learning Outcomes After seeing the video, you will understand the significance and in-depth knowledge of poroscopy and echoscopy. Introduction of Fingerprint We all know that fingerprints differ from one person to another. In many cases, it has been seen that Latin fingerprints that were developed at the crime scene was not properly developed or sometimes they are smudged. Many times we get only a part of the fingerprint from the crime scene. It becomes difficult to compare the fingerprints retrieved from the crime scene with the fingerprints of the suspect. Facing this issue, Lockhart researched and found out about poroscopy and echoscopy. It made the comparison more easier. It is possible to analyze the features of two fingerprints on the basis of certain criteria, which are diverse rich ends, island formations, lakes, cores, deltas, and so on. In addition, tiny sweat pores are also examined, which are seen on the fingers, palm region, and on soles of the feet because they form unique patterns from one individual to another. Poroscopy In this method, the sweat pores on the plantar and palmar surfaces of the fingers are studied. It also serves as a personal identification and the forensic scientists found it as a valuable tool. This method was first proposed by Edmond Lockhart in the year of 1912 as human identification technique. Anyways, it is proved that everything that touches another object leaves behind its traces. Then why not the sweat pores of the fingers? It was proven that the sweat pores that are found on the fingers are permanent, unique and also unchangeable. When the rich characteristics fail to indicate the identity of an individual, pores in the reaches are investigated. Lockhart also outlined some benchmark that may be useful in identifying an individual. From one person to another, the quantity and frequency of pores, interspacing between two holes, the form and size, and also the position of the pores on the fingerprint are studied. To see the small pores, stereo microscope is used and to take the pictures, digital micro camera is used. Case study on poroscopy on 19th June 1912 in France, burglary took place in one apartment. The crime site only bore a few blurry fingerprints. The experts took those fingerprints and studied them thoroughly. During investigating, two suspects were narrowed, named Bodet and Simoni. They were brought to the police station to record their fingerprints. Their fingerprints were also studied. During comparison, the experts found 78 identical spots from Bodet's fingerprint and 94 identical spots from Simonin's fingerprints. This proved that poroscopy is helpful as a comparison tool. Edgioscopy Edgioscopy is the study of the margins of fingerprint reaches. Similar to poroscopy, this also varies from one individual to another. Every ridge edges have distinct features because of their alignment and form. It also varies in terms of the location of the sweat pores on the fingerprint. In 1962, Sholil Chatterjee invented this approach while he was seeking some novel way for identifying criminals. According to his classification, he divided the edges into seven different types, which are straight, convex, picked, table, pocket, concave, and angular. Even when the fingers are burned, the fingerprint reaches do not get destroyed and can be restored back. Case study on echoscopy. Here is a case which will give an example of the importance of echoscopy. It was a famous case in which a criminal named Robert J. Phillips 
had burned his fingers with acid in order to erase the fingerprints from his fingers after committing a crime. Then the physicians used a scalpel to remove the skin from the burned fingers and also from some parts of chest. Then they tapped the finger against the chest. It took nearly three weeks during which his chest skin grew up to his fingertips and the rich edges were clearly visible and when compared he was found guilty and was sentenced to prison for his deeds. Conclusion With changing times, criminals try to conceal their fingerprints to leave no evidence but they always leave behind some evidences which helps us to identify them. Due to the invention of these two methods, Forensic experts are now able to examine and compare identification from a small piece of fingerprint only. Although it may seem very easy but it takes a lot of hard work and patience to examine those fingerprint parts and comparing them. Now it's time for MCQ. And the question is, which instruments are used in poroscopy? Option 1. Electron microscope and digital micro camera. Option 2. Standard compound microscope and digital camera. Option 3. Stereo microscope and digital micro camera. Option 4. Digital microscope and single lens camera. Do mention your answers in the comment section. Hope you all understand the topic and enjoy it throughout the video. If you have any doubts, please do mention in the comment section. Thank you for watching.